Welcome back to another episode of of Whiskey Whiskey and Water, Water, baby. We have such a good episode for you guys today. Yes, and I know we say that every episode, but we we truly do have such a good episode for you guys today. Um, We have on our friend Grace, who is now our new friend, but she is a hormonal holistic health coach. That probably actually should go holistic hormone Hormone health health coach. coach, but she is honestly just so incredibly knowledgeable yeah like Like she blew our minds the entire episode truly an expert in her field and we really feel like we need to do a part two because we there's so much more we could dive into yeah and a lot of today's episode is kind of just setting the foundation we basically talk about women and our cycle and how to work with our body instead of against our body and Mm -hmm. how in each you know different phase of our cycle we have you know better workflow or lower energy levels and how to really optimize where our body is at during that time to optimize your work week and plan out your week and what you have to do in your tasks your to-do list so on and so forth such Mm -hmm. a good episode you guys are going to absolutely love it especially if you kind of deal with period issues or you know hormone health issues like if you have mood swings yeah brain fog anything like that you're going to find a lot of value from this episode yes but before we get into it we're going to say thank you to our show sponsors per usual celsius gang you guys already know today i'm drinking sparkling kiwi guava which is a personal favorite of mine today i broke out the peach vibe however we did did get the strawberry guava flavor in and it what do is we think? what's what's the consensus i mean does celsius ever disappoint do they at, do they ever honestly never if i can rely on one they thing never in miss. this life they never miss it is celsius guys you already know it's healthy energy it accelerates metabolism and it burns body fat it's the only reason i'm snatched today literally one of tyler's my fiance's best friends nick he swears he like can't put on weight now because his metabolism from Celsius is just on it. I mean, that's I mean, hey, that's a good problem to have. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Yeah, he came, he came over for the Super Bowl yesterday, Celsius in hand. I was like, Nick hey, and Nick gang, looks gang. great. He, oh, he slim. He when I first met him, you know, he, he's a cutie. Little, he's a cutie. Little dad bod. <laughs> little dad bod, but he's a he's, he's slimmed out. Yeah, I'm I mean, telling you, he's all thanks to Celsius. He's on that wave. No high fructose corn syrup. No. A, aspartame aspartame no preservatives no artificial colors or flavors you guys know where to find it link in our description and we are going to say thank you to our next sponsor women's realm women's realm goal is to help women lead a healthier and happier lifestyle by providing them with a community that values wellness family and empowering other women so their content is curated by experts with experience across various industries, including beauty, fitness, motherhood, dating, and much more. So they have everything from news to advice and reviews of the latest devices and applications. They cover all topics surrounding women. So it's a really great resource for you guys to it's, just one place, find it mm-hmm. all, and we will have the link in our description yes. for that as well. Hell yeah, brother. Okay. Okay. We got, we wanted to do a little catch up with you guys because I feel like we kind of haven't like, we've just been like hopping into our episodes with our guests. If if you're new here, we used to do a very, like a longer sort of catch up segment where we would just kind of let our listeners know like, hey, this is what's going on in our week. This is the update in our lives. And since we rebranded, we kind of ditched that. But we want to bring a little bit of it back. We at least wanted to tell you guys about our endeavors, what we have going on, what's new, what's good. Um, but so it's, we're going to stick to business related updates though, to stay yeah. on brand, on brand, on brand. Okay. So what is, what are some updates in our lives? Basically last week we threw our first event through our mood, the agency creative agency mm-hmm. not a modeling agency contrary <laughs> to popular belief we are getting a lot of modeling submissions which is great you know we love the interest but mm-hmm. we are not a modeling agency <laughs> we are a creative agency and we decided to we had this idea to throw this event with a few of our closest influencer gal pals that we shoot with every week already mm-hmm. so we just kind of 
decided to do something fun and you know on brand valentine's is coming up and we wanted to celebrate some platonic love yeah it was really cute it was so successful we had like an hour to set up which which wasn't ideal but we kicked ass we went in there and just we were like a storm we partnered with my friend tamir who owns her own um event planning business called tamir tamir creatives and it was just such a successful fun night and really inspiring for us Mm -hmm. like we were like we did that nine yeah we were like how like i don't even know how we like like, put all that together but it was awesome we had balloons we had amazing sponsors for food for wine the food desserts bikinis in our gift bags like it was just the whole nine yeah we had a little outdoor movie if you haven't already seen our content make sure you go look on our page mood the agency we have a little real recap and a bunch of pictures but we did a whole outdoor movie set up and it was just so cute Mm -hmm. it was like one of the things that you just like you dream about doing and then yeah. you do it and all the pictures are so like pinterest worthy i already posted them on pinterest by the way hell yeah brother and yeah i think i actually said on a, one of the last episodes that i need to get on pinterest mm-hmm. so yeah but you should be linking the post are you I, link, oh, could you link girl, the po- on it we love own that. it love that so yeah it was just a really good time and it made us just once we can start to throw larger events we are definitely going to start doing brand activations and anything we can to kind of bring that community together and you know get our get our agency out there Mm -hmm. definitely want to do like potentially a miami like meet up one day obviously Mm -hmm. you know when things are a little bit safer and kind of really bring the community together down here yeah so that was a very successful first event Mm -hmm. that was fun we got some clients on for mood which we're really excited about as well yeah so exciting we um we're really excited for what's in store with mood because we're just really confident in what we've created and it's kind of just, you know, now we're kind of in the stages of, you know, bringing on those first few clients, you know, locking in those photo shoots and then kind of, you know, growing from there, hopefully through word of mouth, through this brand outreach that we've been doing. And yeah, just really excited for the future, honestly. Yeah. So it's been a really fun, honestly, creative process. And it's so fun when you have a new project like that. That's how we were about the podcast when we first started. It's mm-hmm. like when you have something brand new and you're just figuring it out, it's like, just the whole learning process is kind of exciting like there's an element of excitement and joy and just figuring it out and really being creative I think we're enjoying a lot Mm -hmm. um I mean it's I mean there's just so many aspects of it that are so fun I mean from one collaborating and working on a new project together two I've been like every time I go thrifting I find like new props that we can use and like that's really really fun for me because I like have a vision in my mind every time I see one of these props and I can kind of build out a shoot Mm -hmm. in my head based around that and then being able to eventually bring that to life I mean working with our really good girlfriends and you know using them as models is so fun and Mm -hmm. even after we threw this event I mean of course we had a lot of our a lot of our you know girlfriends are just like pretty top tier influencers you know a few million followers so that also garnered a lot of attention to the page and we got a lot of dms just people like wanting to know what we were up to and you know what we're about which was just really cool and just seeing like having people interested in like what you're doing and our baby yeah it's like oh shit people want to fuck with us yeah no it's it's definitely like validating and it's reassuring Mm -hmm. and i think it's also important to note that we decided to move from like a content creation based agency kind of just to a creative agency in general yeah because like we don't want to box our yeah we're we're just so capable of so much more yeah and it feels good to not box ourselves in and we have learned from the past that that's never like a really that's never a good place to be and we know we will get bored of it soon so we figured we, let's just fuck it make it a creative agency like nothing's kind of off limits and also i think Lindsay from the vamped episode if you haven't listened to that episode go check it out it's really really good and she kind of inspired me too in that way where she was like because you know you hear a lot about niches and like honing down on a niche and she was like no if i want to start making dog food tomorrow we're gonna full send on dog food like you know, i i want to keep doing new interesting things and i don't want to limit myself so that you know that kind of for me was like oh, okay it, it's okay to not have one specific expertise so i'm really excited that we decided to take it in that more general route because now we can do things like events or influencer management or or trips in the future you know i mean influencer trips we're constantly like throwing ideas off of each other now and it's like oh I want to hire our friend because our friend is really good at this and we can have them on our team and we can have this person on our team. And it's like, 
I really just feel like it opens up so many doors for us to really become like a creative powerhouse. Yeah, and anything's possible. It's like, yeah, because we didn't limit our, ourselves and we are, we have that freedom because we're, we're the bosses. We're deciding we're the bosses. what to do. And like, I think constantly, like we, I, especially knowing myself, I put the pressure on myself and then I'm like, wait, I am my own boss. I'm allowed to lift off this pressure or I'm allowed to change my mind and go in this direction instead. So I think that's just valuable for our audience to also hear and validate that for you guys too. Mm-hmm, for sure. But yeah, anything else exciting that we want to get into? Um, so for Casa, I if you guys don't already know, I own a vintage home decor and furniture shop um, that Go is operated. Give it a follow on the gram <laughs> that is operated out of my apartment. Um, As of now, yeah, I'm like it's an online shop. But yeah, you can only <laughs> shop via Instagram. You cannot come shop in person, unfortunately. Yet. One day. Um, but I am hopefully going to be doing my first market this month, which I'm really really excited about because I just kind of feel like it's the next step. And as I'm kind of like entering this like um, this world of like markets, I went actually yesterday, took myself on a little solo date um, and went to this antique market um, on South Beach just to kind of like see what the vibe was, see what they had going on. And like people like do this. Like, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like some people. All they do their is markets. Bu- their business thrives off markets exactly. every weekend. Yes. And I would like low key love to have that be like my thing. Like. I love Casa and I love how it kind of operates now, but it is really time consuming and really like taxing. And, you know, like, I I mean, at 8 p.m., I have people coming to pick up stuff when I'd really like to just be fucking watching Netflix and decompressing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So yeah, that's cool. That's what I've been trying to tell you, too, because I I go to these markets and I see hundreds of people come out and like for a lot of people, that's their weekend activity. They like to go to the market. And I just I love that in person, especially post pandemic. I love that in person interaction and really getting to know a brand. The small business. And even, even when I went like I just first of all, it was so enjoyable. Like it was just nice browsing everything, seeing the brands. And not to mention, I was like, yo, I could kill this. Yeah, you know what I mean? Totally. Um, so th- I'm really excited for that. It's, Hopefully I get accepted. I mean, there's like a approval or denial process. And I mean, I, I don't know why I would get denied, um, but you never know. You know, I'm excited everything for happens you. for a reason. So. I'm really excited. I think that's going to be awesome. I will keep you guys updated if I do get approved and hopefully you guys can come out. Yeah, and support. come through. Support your girl. Hell yeah, brother. And before we get into this week's episode, you guys know the weekly challenge. Yes. We need like a little like tagline. Mm-hmm. 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 Weekly challenge. No, it can't be like pro. We'll figure it out. We'll we'll circle back on this, but our weekly challenge this week um, is kind of on brand for this uh, week's episode and kind of was inspired by this week's episode. We want to encourage you guys to take five minutes out of your day every day this week to decompress. And we just feel like this concept of like we're always at like a high of like stress like oh on a scale of one to ten how stressed are you and you know I mean most of the time we'll be like six seven eight nine ten but we never really take that time to like actively decompress or yeah, de-stress. get that bar set a little lower and I really like the concept of decompress because mm-hmm. and like I said in the episode later towards the end of the episode if you guys listen all the way through which you should which you should um it, you know it kind of feels like you're getting this weight lifted off of your yeah, shoulders it's like a physical difference exactly that you feel, totally. and even the other day I you know when I'm in the shower I like like to kind of take that as my self-care time but like I kind of went the extra mile the other day and did a full body sugar scrub love that and then oh, one it was fire love. so I just I felt like a newborn baby that's amazing like I don't know if I've been sleeping because like I do scrubs sometimes but like mm-hmm. not like full body yeah. like I'll, I w- I'll go into my routine after I was like I was like in Getting a spa in yeah, yeah yeah I was like no dead skin nowhere nope <laughs> and then um I had I like lathered up with this body oil after Ooh, and pitch. she's silky I'm silky <laughs> I'm smooth I had this I had my new eucalyptus in the shower yeah I felt like a brand new bitch. Yeah, it's so important. And we get into it with Grace even more in depth, but definitely want to encourage you guys. I feel like all of our challenges are like time-based. So take five or 10 minutes. I just feel like that's good because it, you know, it's not just like saying, oh, something random. It's like, be no. intentional, be intentional about intentional, it. Take the time. So yeah, take five or 10 minutes or 15. However much you feel like the you, minimum is five. You personally need to decompress, whether that be literally just laying on the floor and mm-hmm. doing nothing other than just laying. Get there. horizontal. 
get horizontal i love a good horizontal moment let me tell she you she really does I, I i do be laying on the ground in my backyard sometimes do a grow in the sun let it, that be your five minute decompression we call it a grow because we feel like we're photosynthesizing when we let the sun rays on our skin yeah i say it like as if people know yeah, what doing like, a grow <laughs> let is. me just explain but yeah that is the challenge for this week we will be joining you guys and doing it with you and uh, i love it just the thought of it makes it i'm like i want to lay down right now on the floor <laughs> we're gonna go lay down in the sun <laughs> guys if you've loved this episode thus far please 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 take a screenshot tag us we're, we're posing if you're watching this on youtube <laughs> take a screenshot tag us uh, our graces uh, our grace our grace, our, your grace. Uh, your oh, grace. Having a okay bridgerton, bridgerton moment. Um, no so if our guest's name is grace you can find her at grace rash on instagram tag her tag us we love to see that you guys are listening we love to see you guys are listening it's our favorite thing it and makes our day yeah thanks for your support guys and yeah. hope you love this episode we'll see you on the other side all right and we are live with grace how are you today i'm great how are you guys doing good so i always good. feel like a talk show host <laughs> <laughs> every time i feel like that was so very, happy to be here yeah that was very talk show host but thanks i'm here for, for it me. i'm here for it thank it's you like, so much else? Yeah, I know. How else are you supposed to introduce someone? Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for joining us. We're so, so excited to have you on and have this amazing conversation. Like, so basically, for those of you listening, we had a call with her just like last week and we are ready. Like, we looked at each other and we were like, oh, this is going to be so good. Like, we're so hype. So thank you for joining. Um, To get started, let's tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's so funny you said that too, because I felt I couldn't see you on the phone call, but it very much felt like a, all right, cool. Like, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. it. Well, yeah, I'm super, super excited. Um, but yeah, to just give a little bit of a background, um, my name is Grace Rush, and I am a hormone health coach. I have a background in integrative nutrition and kind of the little mini version of the story that led me to where I am now is I actually had so many hormone health issues growing up, um, especially like teenage years into my early twenties. And, um, I would say from, for probably five years or so, I was going back and forth from the OBGYN, um, trying to figure out what was going on. So I would go between having like a year almost without a period or a cycle at all. And then it would come back and it would come back with a vengeance and just like so many cramps and hormonal Mm. acne and, pain and mood swings and PMS, the whole shebang. Um, And I found that when I, when I would go to the OBGYN or gynecologist, it would just be like, okay, here's some birth control. And And that's Mm -hmm. it. That's like end of the story. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I was already kind of uh, falling into learning more about uh, holistic health. So it was a passion of mine. It was completely unrelated to what I was dealing with, but because I had a passion for that, I was like, hey, maybe I can figure this out too from that perspective. Like there has to be a better answer than just a pack of birth control pills. Right. So I started doing research and on top of the research had just um, started going to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is a school to become certified as a health coach. And um, kind of at the same time as I'm going to school for this thing and then also doing research for myself, I was able to really not just understand how to support my body in a natural way to allow my cycle to come back naturally and to, um, you know, help with the cramps and the hormonal acne and all of the symptoms. I also found that we know so little about the way that our body works as a woman. Like we have like the general sex ed in high school and then sometimes it doesn't go past that at all. And even that is is very limited. So sure, yeah. it was this equal parts of, oh my gosh, I can figure this out naturally and I don't need, you know, something artificial coming into my body to, to manage these symptoms. And then another part of me was like, holy crap, no one knows about what I'm learning about. Like, this is crazy. Uh, so as I was doing that, I, I graduated from the program and I started health coaching very generally. Um, so I started my business and I was coaching women Um, on their health. A lot of them would come to me with skin problems or weight loss or mood issues or really just trying to get an understanding of what they should be eating, how they should be exercising. So general wellness and very, very quickly within a a few months, honestly, found that there was always some kind of underlying hormonal issue, just like I was dealing with, like something would be related, even though the weight problems like related to a metabolism issue that's related to the hormonal system. So um, because I had done so much research for myself and found so much healing for myself and I'm 
realizing now that all these other women are dealing with similar things, I decided to kind of pivot a little bit and niche specifically into hormone health. And thankfully, like months prior to COVID and everything happening, I had decided to transition my business to online and started an online program. Um, and then that happened and I was like, hey, I'm all set. I already did the thing. Everything's wow, online. Great so, timing. Um, it was great because from there, so really um, the last, I would say year or so, um, but really since last like summer, um, things have expanded in a really amazing way. And I um, now have a 12 week online program called the Hormone Balance Blueprint. Um, and so I'm helping women all over the world and also um, in my community doing classes and things like that. And um, the reason that I am here is because it's not just about understanding your body and you know how to manage your symptoms and how to really find that connection again because a lot of us are very disconnected it actually flows into the work world as well especially entrepreneurship because with me actually turning this into a business i found that the tools i could use now that i do understand my body is so applicable to uh, workflow as well and figuring out when my you know peak energy times are and creativity times are and kind of optimizing that based on what my body is already, like what it already is at capacity for um, and has the capacity to do, I can actually tune into that. Um, and a lot of women I think would benefit from that. And it's something that is not talked about very much. Um, we were just chatting earlier about how a lot of things are more systems oriented. And this is like just your body, like what you have all of the time you can access and utilize um, to, to figure things out and to, um, optimize workflow and things like that. So that's a little bit of my story and it's, um, it's really cool. I'm continuing to learn and grow. Um, and it's equal parts, like I said, figuring out the, the physical side of things, um, and then also applying it to work life as well. That's so interesting. And I definitely want to kind of dive into more about kind of like the optimization aspect, but for someone who really doesn't have a lot of information about hormones or you know kind of even how our systems work you know even myself as a 25 year old female don't mm -hmm. really understand how our bodies work so yeah. i'm really curious as to like the hormonal aspect i feel like we write off a lot of you know in imbalances in ourselves mm -hmm. and things of that nature as kind of like normal or just yeah. part of being a woman so how did you kind of realize that there was an imbalance with yourself and then mm -hmm. like kind of seek to fix it? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that uh, the biggest thing to think about first and foremost, and this is something that I find myself saying all the time is just because something is very common doesn't always mean that it's normal. Um, so just like you said, we kind of deem hormone imbalances and, and this lack of understanding as normal um, because it is very common. I mean, mm -hmm. 80 to 90 percent of women are dealing with some kind of cycle related problem, whether it be PMS or cramping or acne mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Um, and that's very true. But that, that's a, a large number of women dealing with these things. However, it doesn't always mean that it's normal. So what I found is almost all of the symptoms that I was dealing with um, really wasn't how the body naturally works. Um, there are a lot of ebbs and flows that we could talk about. I think it's important before we get into the optimization aspect to understand how the cycle works, because then mm -hmm. you're able to actually look at the different times in your cycle and how you can match it to workflow. Yes, enlighten um, us, so, please. Yeah, of I, course. Um, I hate that I like don't know anything about my body. Like, what? Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like we're about to open up the yeah. door to like Narnia right Fill now. Fill me in. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. So, um, and it's so funny because it just snowed yesterday and I was like low key pretending that I was in Narnia, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's crazy. I think a lot of us are limited to period ovulation happens sometime in the middle. And I think a lot of women don't even, even tell you. That. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. Um, so a period is usually about a week or so ovulation somewhere in the middle and then there's this thing called PMS that just kind of like floats around the week before your period um, and that's pretty baseline that's knowledge right now <laughs> yeah yeah so and that's um the majority of women uh because like I said the the biggest thing actually when I talk to women and in work with them before we even get into 
educating on the cycle and then talking about the different, you know, aspects of support, like nutrition and, and just general lifestyle. We actually talk about the, the misinformation or even lack of education in general that's out there about our hormones, um, especially the big one being that all of this is normal. Um, I've had, I think that OBGYNs and doctors, of course, they have their, their place in the world and they're doing amazing things. However, it's really hard to hear a lot of women say the same thing of, I came with you know, a list of these symptoms and was told like, yep, this is just part of, part of it, part of being a woman. And that's just not the case. So, um, to give a a brief overview without getting to like Mm -hmm. all over the place, I feel like that meme that has like the little like equations floating around their head. Like I feel like that girl all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Keep myself grounded here. But, um, the, there's four phases of the cycle that are very significant. Um, so we do have menstruation, which really isn't the star of the show. First of all, I think a lot of people think of your, like when you hear cycle, you think your period and yeah. really what's happening is the whole point of the cycle is the moment that you do ovulate. That's when you're able to conceive and get pregnant. And if you don't get pregnant, the result of that is a period because your body is just like built up this nice cushiony home for the baby. And then there's no baby. So it's like, all right, we got to get rid of everything. Um, And that's what a period is. So to get into the four phases, you do have menstruation. That's the week of your period. That's when you're bleeding. Most people know what that is. And then after menstruation is something called the follicular phase. And again, not to get super into the science behind it, um, but this is actually where you're a follicle inside of the, um, I'm trying to figure out like what in depth I should get to. Um, But besides all of the sciencey part of it, just thinking of your body's kind of, it's like you have your cycle here at the beginning um, and then that's menstruation. Um, the cycle is the whole thing. And then ovulation is, is more in the middle. And so between your period and ovulation is follicular phase. That's the best way to think about it. So it's preparing for that egg to be released. Mm-hmm. And while that's happening, the most important thing to realize is you're going from low levels of hormones to ovulation, which is where your hormones are at their highest point. So this phase in between is really important because your energy levels are completely changing. You're going from the lowest energy you probably experienced, um, not just physically, but mentally as well, um, to the highest right near, right, right in this phase of the follicular. So you're just on this steady incline, and this is the best time to take advantage of, um, like, making a to-do list and preparing. It's kind of like a, if you think of just the newness of um, this new phase of your cycle, because you're coming out of menstruation. It's almost like you're coming out of hibernation and it's the time to take advantage of those steadily rising energy levels and get things done. Um, And in this phase too, a lot of people notice that they can sometimes start feeling this like restless energy, almost a sense of anxiety the week after the period because those energy levels are increasing and maybe you're not utilizing them properly. So this doesn't just mean in your workflow, but also, you know, moving your body as well and kind of getting that energy moving. You've probably been resting a lot for almost an entire week, um, more than you usually do, or maybe even pushing yourself through that week of trying to continue doing things at the same momentum you'd normally do during your period. So this is a really great time to kind of get all of that energy out and start utilizing it. And then you move into ovulation, which is the third point there. Um, so you have menstruation, follicular, ovulation, that's where energy levels are at their highest. Uh, for workouts and things like that, you're going to have the energy to do those things. You're also going to have the energy to show up in a really big way in work life. Um, so this is, especially for people who are entrepreneurs using social media and things like that, this is a great time to just show up and be present, record things, um, you know, kind of maybe even pre-record, like get some stuff done so that you've kind of built up. Um, you know, content and things like that, because this is the time to be social. This is the time that you're most articulate. We're just, if you think about ovulation being like very open and high energy, especially because, you know, from a biological standpoint, this is when your body's like ready to make a baby. So it kind of like optimizes everything. Like, let's go, let's be open and ready to um, do all the things. And so this is the the great point to utilize that. Um, and then the final thing. So we, we just talked about period follicular ovulation. The last one is luteal phase. And the luteal phase is where you're moving from ovulation, which is that highest peak of energy and hormone levels 
and then you're moving back into the, the next period that you have, which is going to be that low energy again and those low hormone levels. And so luteal phase is all about kind of finding that balance of, of going from all of this high energy to kind of hibernating once again. Um, and people, a lot of the time, look at the cycle as four seasons as well, because conveniently, we do have four seasons, just like we have four phases. And so if, if your period's like winter, because you're like hibernating and everything's kind of inward, um, and then the next phase of follicular is like the springtime where everything's new again, everything's fresh, it's time to kind of get outside and get going. Ovulation is almost like the summer where you're just having a good time, you have more energy, there's more things to do. And then the luteal is like the fall. So we're kind of transitioning back inward again. Um, so luteal phase is a time to, during that first half, I would definitely recommend like a lot of preparing. Um, so because you know that that next week is going to be lower energy, just doing a lot of preparation um, and just knowing, slowing down, turning inward so that as you do transition to the menstrual phase again, um, you're prepared and you know what's coming. Um, but as a whole, before we get really deep into the optimization pieces, just knowing that there's there's an intention, there's a why behind every single day of your cycle, not just your period, not just PMS, not just this kind of elusive thing called ovulation that we don't even really know when it's happening. I think for the most of us, um, there's a lot of a lot of cool things happening in your body if you break it up that way and actually and look at it that way, um, not just from a level of of understanding your body and symptoms you might be experiencing, but just connecting to it and not just feeling like you're kind of bebopping around your day um, and getting things done. Like there's stuff going on and you can actually tap into that. So um, I'm curious to know you guys, like your thoughts after having, you know, maybe not known about a lot of these things and how it feels to just kind of like have those gears turning on a different perspective. Yeah, that's so good. And there's so much to unpack here. I don't know if you yeah. noticed, but we're both literally like <laughs> writing down notes yeah. like crazy. Um, okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. But yeah. I think that's really eye opening because I think a lot of what we deal with, um, you know, not just as women, but I think especially as women with our emotions and our hormones and just our day to day kind of attitude towards life. Yeah. Um, I think we think I know f I speak for myself, but I feel like a lot of it is just kind of random. Like I'll wake up and be confused as to why I'm not in a great mm -hmm. mood. And it's almost mm -hmm. like hearing you say that every single day, like something is happening. It, it's like validating in a way because it's not just me yeah. waking up in a bad mood. It's like, no, there's there's more going on here. There's levels to this shit. Mm -hmm. So one, I think it's really validating and it's not random, you yeah. know, like I, I we. I think we write off our mood a lot of times as just being random or like you're like I don't know why I'm in such a bad mood yeah. I don't know why I'm being a bitch and it's like well because there's things happening that you're not totally aware of so I think that's really cool and I definitely want to be more in tune with that like I feel like you kind of just like peeled back a layer in my brain yeah. for me to like look at myself differently yeah and kind of just take a deeper look at like why things are happening and and I think it'll allow you know you to be more gentle with yeah, yourself totally, in a lot of aspects totally. too mm -hmm. yeah and like give yourself grace in a way mm -hmm. um and I think it's also interesting what you said about well I want to clarify so would you say that mm -hmm. each each phase of the cycle is lasts about a week like what would what type of time frame would you give each phase yeah 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 so um for the menstrual phase for your period that that's a little bit different depending on the person some people might have like a shorter period like three days mm -hmm. some people it might be an entire week um so generally speaking if you want to give that a week or so because even if it's on the lighter side you might be spotting for a couple of days or something like that right um so really giving yourself a full week to um to kind of slow down and and recognize that as your period week um, and then the follicular phase. So technically speaking, just to clarify, if anyone like does further research and is like, wait, she said this, the follicular mm -hmm. phase kind of had like menstrual phases inside of it in a way, but because okay. we're having our period and that's really what, what we're thinking about, we kind of separated into the second one. So the follicular phase after you finish your period 
is again about a week long okay um, so you're thinking about ovulation that makes sense because typically we have like a four week cycle like a, a month mm-hmm. long 28 days or so 20 to 28 to 30 days for a lot of people gotcha. um so ovulation is going to be somewhere in the middle um it looks different for a lot of people and different things can affect ovulation whether it's stress or travel um but for like i mean menstruation one week follicular phase another week ovulation it's really like a 24 hour period um so it's really interesting to think about because now just a, a quick little side note when it comes to pregnancy prevention and things like that while and it, we're all you know we're girls here we can talk about what we want to talk about so mm-hmm. the first um you know that one day is ovulation however when it comes to pregnancy sperm can live inside of the body for like five or so days. So we almost look at it as a, another window of time. I don't even know who, like the percentage of people that know about that. They're like, oh, I only ovulate for 24 hours. So that's like the only day I need to worry about. And that's not true. Like, you right, know, if it's right. five days prior, you can just be like chilling in there and then you ovulate and it's, it's just already there. Yeah, and that's PSA. Already- <laughs> <laughs> PSA, ladies, brothers, brothers, watch out, ladies. Yeah. You know, beware. Um, yeah. Don't so, say we didn't warn you. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to make a little side note because when I say twenty four hour twenty four hour period, I think a lot of them are like, oh, sweet. That's I can only get pregnant for one day. I no, I mean, yeah. Month. Speaking for myself, I did not know sperm can live in you for five days. I thought it was like kind a, of terrifying. I thought it was like a few hours thing. <laughs> Great. Like, and they just die fine. off after that. Wow, I've gotten lucky or I'm infertile. Okay, next. Uh, yeah. What were you going to say? And the next yeah. phase? Um, <laughs> and also thinking about the fact that ovulation can, it's not like happens on day 14 every right. single time for every single person. Right, there right, are ways right. to measure that. We can talk about that if we want to. I would look into um, like fertility awareness and things like that and, mm-hmm. or tracking your cycle if you are someone who wants to understand a little bit more. Like, what that looks like for you sure. um so we again kind of we we talk about instead of just ovulation it's almost like a fertility window quote unquote okay. so that's going to be you know five days or so we can say okay, a week okay. just to say a week um but the luteal phase is the longest phase and it kind of makes sense because it's almost like broken up into two parts where the first half is you know coming down from ovulation and then the second half is approaching menstruation again so the second half of luteal is really what people would call their pms week Mm, um, and okay. a lot of the reasoning behind that PMS is sometimes because of that sharp decline in hormone levels as you move into menstruation again. Um, so that's the longest one. I would literally just think of it um, in the easiest way, like giving all of them a week except for luteal phase. Correct. Um, but because ovulation is a little bit shorter, it does total out to like the, the month-ish of a cycle. So like 28 to 32 days for a lot of people. Um, and luteal phase can kind of shrink or, or lengthen depending on who you are and what those levels look like. Um, but keeping in mind that that one is the longest one. And then the little piece about ovulation of technically speaking, you're ovulating for a day or so in terms of that one, you know, mature mm-hmm. egg being released that can be fertilized, but there's a couple little intricacies yes, around that. Definitely, but, um, which are important to note, definitely. So thank you yeah. for doing that. Well, yeah. so yeah, I think that's so interesting that kind of there's four. And then like you said, there's four seasons. Mm-hmm. I just think like nature constantly like mirrors itself cool. and I just see yeah. these patterns being repeated in so many things and I just think like yeah. you making you comparing that to the seasons of the year is so cool. Yeah, and I didn't even personally <laughs> know about that until I was working with a client in my program and she was from uh Melbourne, Australia, I believe. Um somewhere in Australia. I, th- I think it was Melbourne. And um, I, I don't know if it's something that's more common, like not in America, <laughs> yeah, um, in other parts of the world. But um, it was so it was so beautiful because we were we were in a session together, and I was like, "What phase of the cycle are you in?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm in autumn." And oh, I was I love like, that. "In autumn," <laughs> and I was like, "What do you mean?" And she was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, um, lose your phase." And I was like, <gasps> "Why did you say autumn?" And then she explained it to me, and she's like, "Well." You know, I was I was taught that like the four phases are like the four seasons. And when she said that, I was like, that makes I, so I much hate America. Sense. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I'm like, why are we so ignorant to everything? Yeah. I'm like, that makes I don't so know much if sense. That is something that is like coming from other places besides America, or maybe just that particular person um, knew no, about I love, it. I love I, that. Yeah, it was so cool. I mean, that was 
a while ago that I've now been able to, to tell that to people too, because it's also really easy because sometimes it can be hard to just be like, okay, follicular and luteal yeah. and all these yeah. weird words. And so if you break it up into that kind of like seasonal aspect, um, and again, how coincidental, quote unquote, that it, we have this yeah. like perfect It's you know, not reflection. though. I will only be referring yeah. to my cycles as seasons from now on. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm in summer, y'all. Like, literally. <laughs> so cool i love that it's really encouraging like me to be more in tune and just track it because on it's something i've been really ignorant to to be completely honest and and not to mention i just feel like you know i'm i'm always you know for optimization and stuff and i'm like i want to know what what cycles you're in so that you know we can kind of collaborate together yeah Yeah. most efficiently yeah and I, cool. and I almost hate that i'm like looking at it from like a business standpoint because i'm like this is our fucking cycle but you know at the same time yeah. it's like it's so important like and yeah. you know I'll, i mean i'd like to know fucking i'll look up your astrology signs someday and be like how's olivia feeling today and so yeah. like i just feel like being able to like understand where we're at at what point yeah, yeah mentally yeah. even like it yeah. would just help us have grace with each other mm-hmm. on like our hard days and yeah. you know you know, be yeah. also be able to like make up for each other's like faults. Lack. Lack yeah. That's what I was going right. to say too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not so. just from a cognitive standpoint of like how you're feeling, what your energy levels look like, but being able to be like, okay, cool. Like I'm on my period this week and I just, it's hard for me to show up right now, but Hey, you're, you're in this time where you can show up and you do have like more capacity to do that. So like, how could we make that work? And it's also just a communication thing. Like how, just a deeper level of you guys for, or anyone that's listening to this that has maybe a business partner or something like that to be able to communicate even more efficiently with each other. Cause you literally are like getting like this inside look at what their biology looks like right now. That's so cool. Like how cool would it be to be able to work alongside that? Yeah. You're, you're working with your body instead of working against it. Yep. And I think that's priceless. <laughs> Hundred percent. Uh, I want to get into a little bit about like brain fog and kind of the reasons why that can happen during those certain phases and how maybe yeah. someone can navigate it. Yeah, yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so brain fog, there's a lot to unpack in that department because there's a kind of a whole nother side of, um, you know, maybe nutrients that you might be lacking and what your diet looks like. Um, But we can talk a little bit about the mental side of the Mm -hmm. cycle and then talk about brain fog on top of that. Um, So one really interesting thing that I talk about that is kind of like a mind blown moment for a lot of um, people that I I talk to um, is this concept that I learned about the during menstruation actually is when the right and left hemispheres of the brain are in highest communication. And so this is one of the reasons why people tend to feel so much more vulnerable and emotional during this week. It's just like almost a meme that you are just like crying at everything during your period at this point. So when you kind of attach meaning to that, it's so cool because you're like, oh my gosh. I mean, think about the right and left brain hemispheres. A lot of people talk about like the left side being the more logical side of the brain and the right side being like the creative emotional side of the brain. And so there's like, a lot of overlap during this time and that's why we kind of like ebb and flow in and out of our emotions a lot more during this week um and so it's actually like studies have even shown that um, women can have a better capacity for taking tests and exams and things like that during this phase because there's just even though it's it's funny because you might not think that um at first you know glance thinking about like how you feel during your period but all of the symptoms aside that's what your brain's doing during this time um and so I think a lot of people experience brain fog. Um, They can do it cyclically. It can be related to your hormones. And I would definitely recommend tracking that first and foremost. When it comes to any symptom, I always say, let's let's first of all track down and figure out when exactly it's happening because then we can figure out what phase it's happening in and Mm. why that could be happening. So if you're someone who notices that you maybe have more of a consistent brain fog for various reasons, it could be like, burnout related it could be related to your diet um but you maybe notice it more strongly during like the week before your period which would be pms maybe you notice it more during your period that's a really great thing to track um and i think a lot of people sometimes experience it more 
during that PMS time. And again, mm -hmm. there's so many components to this. The biggest thing besides so many PMS symptoms, including something like brain fog, would be that steady decline um, in hormone levels. Um, but overall, brain fog, that whether it's consistent or not, um, can be an, an estrogen or progesterone issue. Those are the two main hormones that we usually talk about when we're talking about your hormones. Um, these are the two that literally, I know that the someone that's just listening to the audio can't see this, but you almost think about like a, you know, like a graph almost. And these two are almost going like making like a little hill during ovulation and then they're plummeting down closer to menstruation. Um, and so sometimes when estrogen levels are too high or too low, or progesterone levels are too high or too low. And again, all these things you can't balance naturally. Um, that can cause an issue in that cognition and brain fog. Um, so when it comes to memory and just concentration, I think it's the biggest thing a lot of mm -hmm. women, especially talking entrepreneurially and um, just from a workflow perspective, like being able to actually sit down and do something and have right. that laser focus and not be distracted or feel like you just can't get in that kind of flow state where you're just creating. Um, so I would definitely, again, look at when it's happening um, and then it could be, it could be a hormone imbalance. And so that's something that um, I would recommend looking into further on how to balance those levels out. Um, talking to someone like me, like a coach who, who does this and can actually work alongside you in figuring that out. Um, but overall, when we talk about anything, I just really want to emphasize tracking. And I know that you said that's something that um, you were going to start kind of looking into a little bit more is actually being on top of like where, number one, where am I in my cycle right now? Like, I have no idea. Like, let's actually start tracking this and figure out where I am. And you can kind of plan for the week ahead that way. Um, but also as symptoms come up, whether it's in your phone, in an app, in a journal, um, just checking in with yourself and when a symptom comes up eventually after a, a few weeks of doing that you can very easily look back and notice any patterns that could be coming up does that make sense yeah For no sure. totally no, that's so interesting and yeah. i i am curious do you have any recommendations for like you know certain supplements or nutrition or foods that people should focus on during these certain cycles to help like, balance them out yeah because you know i feel yeah. like it can almost be, you know, a little bit overwhelming or you can almost feel a little bit helpless a lot of the time during your cycle. Like, like even just having this conversation, I have a rage inside me towards men because I'm like, they don't have to deal with <laughs> fuck shit. And so yeah. I'm like, you know, how, how can we truly optimize, you know, and or combat some of these feelings that come up? Yeah. Yeah. And, and before I, dive into that piece I think it's good I think a lot of us have that same kind of rage of like why us like why why do we have to deal with this and half oh, yeah. the population doesn't have to I'm pissed um but it's if you can almost look at it from a different perspective and once you see how we almost have an advantage in a way too because we have this really cool tool that we can tap into and the way that um like a male body works uh biologically speaking is they wake Simple up with a certain dub. amount of <laughs> they, they well, wake up I, with boner go to sleep with boner that's it <laughs> eat poop well, call it a day think about it like that though they wake up with a certain level of testosterone for the day and then that testosterone is being used up until the end of the day and then while they're sleeping the levels go back up again so they wake up with the same amount it's it's a daily cycle versus a monthly cycle Ooh, that um, is really interesting yeah so if you think about it that way sorry you can you okay? i was yes i'm sorry i just i i meant to i wrote a note about periods being your superpower right i wrote okay. periods are your super bowl <laughs> and i just can't keep it together oh they sure gosh. are it's a super what bowl did you did you, write it? like, were you thinking about the super bowl yeah i don't, I don't know. know it just came out i literally hilarious. just like wrote it down <laughs> oh, that's okay so sorry that's where were you I forgot. Periods are your Super Bowl. Um, oh, how, how men, cycle. they have daily cycles versus yes. we have a monthly yes. cycle. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so on one level, we can definitely um, kind of fall into that trap of like, it's not fair. Like, why do we have to yeah. deal with this? Um, but how boring would it be to like wake up the same way every single day? You know, like you, yeah. it's kind of cool to think about like we have um, this completely different system that we can tap into 
and and I've talked to women who are um, aware of this and do utilize this. I actually had um, a, a business mentor who I had no idea she had been using her cycle and like optimizing workflow based on her cycle. And so that was really cool to talk about. Um, but yeah, I can we can use it as a tool. But I think the the question that you had was nutrition, right? Like how? Yeah, many- yeah. What okay. supplements you might recommend? Oh, yeah. or I actually completely forgot about anything. That. Thank you for yeah. circling back. <laughs> anything yeah. to combat like the hormone imbalance for certain phases? Yeah. Um, so there, there's a lot there. Um, so, and this is actually an entire module in in the program that I have, and so I'll definitely you don't know, divulge talk too much. Whatever you're comfortable. Yeah. With. Yeah. Um, what I think is important, because we could talk for a long time about that. I, I want to start by saying that everyone's body is different. Definitely, mm-hmm. have, um, number one, don't use and also don't super agree with any kind of one size fits all approach, which I think a lot of people can take when it comes to health in general of like for following sure. into all of these different diets sure. or like that and um, really decide for yourself, this is going to be me figuring out what works for me, not I'm going to start doing research and find a diet label that feels good. Um, And so the way to start with that, I think is number one, before you get into any kind of specifics on what you should be eating, um, or what you should be eating, I'm also not a fan of the word should, Um, I always tell people stop shooting on yourselves, because I think (laughs) it, it kind of boxes you in. Um, but what you, what might be best to eat, what might not be best to eat. Um, number one, before you even do that, like, let's talk about things that you probably already know don't sit well with your body. The biggest things are usually like refined sugar, gluten, dairy, um, caffeine for a lot of people too. like getting really real with yourself. And again, just like I talked about with symptoms, the best way to really figure things out and really connect with your body is just tracking, writing things down having a journal on hand, having notes in your phone, whatever it is. And you won't have to do this forever, but while you're in this little kind of journey of trying to find that connection again, you might just have to be a little bit more on top of, of tracking things. And so I would definitely, um, and it doesn't mean track every single thing that you eat, but maybe if you eat a meal and you're like, ugh, I do not feel good. Or maybe you notice that your skin's not the best that it, that it could be right now. And just kind of reflecting back on well, what have I been eating the last couple of days. And again, just like with symptoms, as you kind of become consistent with doing that to a certain degree, you can start to actually look back and see, oh my gosh, every single time I ate dairy, I started having digestive problems and my skin broke out and blah, 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 or every single time I ate gluten or every time, whatever. And it's going to be different for everyone. I'm, I'm not someone who, you know, says everyone should be gluten-free, dairy-free, this free, that free, everything. Um, there are things that are more commonly like triggery for some people I guess you Mm -hmm. could say which are those things that I talked about earlier the caffeine refined sugar gluten dairy um, especially when it comes to gut health which is a whole nother tangent that we could go on but that's so important for hormone health and uh, brain fog and all that good stuff yes Um, but when we get to specifics after you've almost done like an audit for yourself I would say of some things that you're just like oh this really doesn't ever make me feel good I should probably figure out how to find a balance there then you can start to look at number one just the the very fundamental concept of what kind of ratio do you have of whole foods to processed foods like getting really real with yourself how often are you consuming whole foods like foods that are just natural on the earth whether they're growing from the ground or they're an animal or whatever it is whether you're plant-based or not um looking at that and and getting really real with yourself there because i'm all about balance i'm all about what you said earlier like showing yourself some grace um i did go through a season of life where i did have a lot of restrictions and i work with a lot of clients who put a lot of restrictions around their diet and it just never goes well Um, If you're about to sit down and and eat a meal and you feel almost this little sense of anxiety, like, oh my gosh, I wonder if this is the right thing that I should be eating. Like, is this going to break me out? Is this going to gain weight? Is this going to do this? Is this going to do that? Like, that's not a good state to be in when you're consuming your food. That's not a healthy Um, place to be mentally. No. And it's not a good relationship to have with food. Like, it's beginning of a problem for sure. Yep. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, too, of that relationship. Um, so yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is to, um, take a look at that and, and be really real with yourself and also show yourself some grace of when, when you look at that and say, how often am I consuming like, whole nutritious foods over 
what's convenient or what I'm craving or whatever it is. Um, also realizing that doesn't have to go away. You know, if, if you wake up at, or you are up at midnight or two in the morning, you're like, I'm gonna get a milkshake and it's gonna feel really good. And that's just what I want right now. Then cool, that's fine. Go do that. I feel uh, very just, seen. <laughs> Yeah, I did that the other day. And like, I've been doing this stuff for years and it, it's fine. Um, cause that's, I always use that example too. Cause it's like the sleep thing and the nutrition thing. Cause you know, you want to be getting enough sleep and you want to have nutrition on point. But if there's a day where you just don't want to sleep when you want to go get a milkshake instead, that's just so living your it. life. It's, it's all um, about balance here. That's why we're uh, called whiskey and water. So yeah, we're, we're all that. We're I didn't even think the, about that. Yeah, That's we're perfect. all for the balance for sure. Yeah, yeah. The the moment the thing that I tell um, with the nutrition side of things, especially, but I'll tell a lot of women that I work with is a story that I heard when I was in school for nutrition. Um, there was a man that told this really awesome story, and I say it all the time because it's such a good kind of um, almost like a little parable for that that sense of balance. Um, and also kind of calls you out, I think, uh, especially me being in school for nutrition, I was expecting all these professors and educators and experts to be very uh, just tr- tr- uh, strategical <laughs> with how they explain nutrition and, and would make me even more obsessed with it. But this man walks up and he did start by giving a really great um, lecture on nutrition, the importance of nutrition. And then he tells his story. It's obviously not a real story because it's a story about where he went to heaven and he's walking around heaven. Um, so funny because of the church bells that just <laughs> rang and cut us off. But yeah, have you guys um, heard those that music in the background? It's, that's <laughs> what it's like living in the south. It's church bells. Yeah. It's casual. Um, but yeah, so he's the story is that he's walking around heaven. He's he's meeting everybody and just saying hello and everyone's super happy, just happy to be there. And then he sees this old man who's sitting there looking super grumpy and he decides to walk up to him and he's like dude you're in heaven what the heck why are you so upset and the man's like well when i was on earth i you know i did everything i could to live as long as possible i got up at five in the morning i drank my superfood smoothie i went for a five mile run i did this and he's listening all these things that you know in the name of health he did and he's like and look I still ended up in the same place as all of these people that just lived their life and enjoyed their life. And it was such an incredible story for me to hear at the time because it's just so telling of how important balance is. Like if you can look back and, and see that there was balance and feel good about it, of like, yeah, I took good care of myself, but I still had fun and I still went out with my friends and didn't worry about what they were eating and what I was doing and if I, if I was missing my workout or whatever it was. Um, just finding that balance is so, so important. And so when we talk about nutrition, I always have to preface with that, where if I'm making recommendations and talking about doing like a little bit of an audit, it, it does not mean that you have to go all in or all out when, when you do something like this. In fact, I think that that in and of itself can be harmful to your hormone health. I think totally. that having that attitude, um, we just mentioned that earlier, like even if you have the most nutritious meal on your plate, if you're you know, in this anxious state when you're consuming it, that's doing more harm to your body on top of the good that you're putting into your body. So it's this weird kind of paradoxical thing. Um, But a couple of supplements I would recommend because um, I'm someone who uh, there's this very polarizing kind of thing in the supplement world where some people think you can get everything you want from your food and you should never have to supplement if you're really doing it the right way. And then other people who are like, we just don't live in a world where we can get everything we need anymore. Things are deprived and we're under more stress than usual and environmental stressors and things like that. So we need to supplement. And I'm somewhere in the middle where I think that it's, it's good for you to be mindful of and experiment with and see how you feel. Um, So something I just mentioned earlier about the importance of gut health. So without getting too into it, Um, gut health is just really important. We need to make sure that our microbiome is on point for so many things to function, not just our hormones and our our brains. Um, People are starting to realize, like research is showing that the gut is almost like the second brain. It's in charge of so much more than you realize. Um, A quick little piece that I will say, because I know that um, one of you mentioned earlier about like waking up and just being in a weird mood and not really knowing why, Um, your gut health actually can have a lot to do with your mood because it's so crazy even to say, even though I've known this for a long time, but um, some studies have shown that up to 90% of serotonin is produced in your gut. 
I think we said that uh, the other I, day. I've heard that. I think I we said yeah. that on the pod the other day. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. it's. Yeah. No, no, it's it's like a com- and I actually so it's I, so I, insane. It, I mean, it's yeah. absolutely fucking crazy, and the fact yeah. that you know we've been like kind of ignorant to that fact for a really long yeah. time. But I um, I recently started taking um, I I love supplements, and mm-hmm. I love just experimenting with things. And honestly, I really do yeah. like sense a difference in my mood and my just like energy levels and my yeah. focus when I do take them and I take um 5-HTP like uh the precursor to serotonin and I mean I think that it is a game changer and like it just it makes me and like I also take like L-theanine which I feel like helps a lot as well and I just yeah. I'm a huge proponent of like just supplementing and were you yeah. going to say something about probiotics and like yeah. coming up to yeah. the gut health? Yeah. I was going to say that I think that could be something to experiment with just as a just fundamental, um, especially because they have some really good like probiotics specific to like a female body because you're not just talking about your gut microbiome, but vaginal microbiome and things like that. Though we yeah. want to be on point as well because Absolutely. there's a whole other microbiome going on down there. So um, that's a, a really good thing to look into to just fundamentally have, oh, like maybe my gut's not in the best place. Mm-hmm. And this is on top of, you know, making some nutrition changes in the direction of, you know, more whole foods, yeah. less foods that might be upsetting you with, you know, the dairy, the gluten, things like that. Um, so I would look into a probiotic. I would make sure that it's a really good probiotic. Um, the, the source is really important. Um, i I always recommend, I think the brand is, it's hard for me to recommend brands because I feel like there's always someone that's like, I heard that they did this. Yeah, um, I know. And that's but, the thing with supplements. It can be very yeah. overwhelming because there's so much, so much on the market. So much information yeah. out there, so much on the market. Yeah. 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 Um, but I know that the brand, um, and this is also because I know that I'm sure a lot of listeners might um, want like a plant-based option as for well sure. to a probiotic because some probiotics are coming from, you know, dairy and things like that. So yeah. Um, Garden of Life, I believe, is the brand, mm-hmm. and they have a woman's um, probiotic, and it's it's like a raw food source, so it's really cool. Um, and I think that they might have like other enzymes and stuff in there for digestion. Um, so I would look into that, and that that goes into so much more than just um, you know hormone health. That's talking about like making sure that you're absorbing the nutrients that you can be absorbing from your food. That you're you know that's a, an important thing too to make sure your gut's in the position to actually um, you know, be taking the things in that you're consuming it, you know, you're consuming a healthy diet and then your gut can't actually get all the nutrients out of it that it could be. So that's really important. Um, I would even say, I think some people steer away from just a good old multivitamin, but sometimes just doing a little bit of research and starting there to see how you feel. Um, if you want to get specific, uh, it's, it's really hard to recommend generally because I like to recommend based on what people, are dealing with or maybe what their levels look like. Um, I think that one thing that would be important to look into that a lot of women deal with is uh, higher levels of estrogen in the body. It's going to cause things like hormonal acne, um, painful periods, heavy periods, irregular cycles, sometimes really heavy cycles. Um, and uh, really the pain side of things, the acne side of things, if it's getting more extreme, like weird hair growth and things like that. But um, estrogen dominance is what it's called kind of to its fullest extent. And so there are some things you can supplement with to help with that, that can help with so many symptoms, especially if you're dealing with like the, the painful side of things and the hormonal acne and things like that. Um, it has a lot to do with the way that your liver is handling the higher amounts of estrogen. And so a really great herbal supplement you can take is dandelion root. Um, you can do that as a supplement or you can take that as just drinking it as tea. It's a really great, um, tea and more like earthy flavor um and some coffee alternatives actually use dandelion root as a base so that's really nice because if you feel like you need a little bit of a detox from caffeine and at the same time want to support that side of things with your hormones you can look into something that has dandelion root but what this does is it helps the liver detoxify excess levels of estrogen in the body that could be causing those symptoms um so again supplement or tea for that um another herbal supplement that in the hormonal realm is really really popular is something called chasteberry or vitex i don't know why those names are so different like who decided it's going to be called vitex um but yeah that's what it is and you can get that as like a supplement in a pill form or a supplement like a little 
tincture dropper bottle kind of deal. And it's really, really great um, for women that have irregular cycles, PMS, um, especially if you have like a missing period or your cycles are so irregular that you can't even track them. Yeah. Um, there's been a good bit of research showing that um, Vitex is really helpful for this. Um, so there's kind of like two different worlds of the the more tangible like vitamins and minerals side of mm -hmm. things and then you get into the herbal side of things which is a little bit different um, another category that i do want to touch on is adaptogens and i don't know how familiar you guys are with adaptogens but they're great um i, take I think that too. yeah yeah so the reason behind this is not so much directly focused on your hormones but because stress can be the biggest hormone disruptor for so many people, especially in our day. And I would say, especially for those listening who, you know, are an entrepreneur and are working for themselves and they're their own boss and wearing a million different hats. And Definitely, we have yeah. an, an entirely different level of stress there. Um, and adaptogens are really amazing at helping our bodies adapt to that stress and handle it in a better way. Um, so looking at things like ashwagandha, which is just so cool to even say that you take something called ashwagandha because yes. we're going to be like, whoa, you take ashwagandha? <laughs> what is that? Um, yeah, and all of the different mushrooms, like reishi mushroom, um, cordyceps is great for um, not just the um, stress management side of things, but especially like energy. And that might be really great for mental clarity for those I know you mentioned brain fog mm -hmm. earlier. Um, so reishi is probably the biggest one. I feel like people might hear that and be more familiar. Um, things like lion's mane is a really great one. Uh, I would just maybe do a little bit of research. You don't have to do too much into adaptogens, especially adaptogenic mushrooms. And you can find um, different supplements that have like a combination of these instead of just taking one of them. So you get kind of a fuller yeah. spectrum of that. Because that's, yeah, it can be overwhelming when you're yeah. like of all these things. And honestly, like, I love that, like, everything that you're saying I do take so I'm like okay cool. I'm on like yeah. some sort of good track yeah, I actually take work. um for our listeners I take these um these ones called aurora mornings and it's like what you said like they have like the ashwagandha they have the reishi they have the lion's mane and you know a bunch of other things in the one pill and I, th nice. I think that's the one that like really makes me feel super good throughout the day and I mean yeah. mushrooms are just so powerful I won't eat them myself um but I will take them in <laughs> pill form yeah and yeah super good for you that's awesome I, I just love this whole concept so you would say just to round that out because I, I believe the question was like how would you best recommend to conquer these hormonal imbalances and really the, the simple and short answer is nutrition when it comes down to it it's like what you're putting in your body either through the foods you eat or the supplements that you take that's really the one way to kind of yeah. combat those imbalances um and i think a lot of people like you had mentioned before turn to and it's not anyone's fault it's just the society we live in turn to the one answer the holy grail birth control and for mm -hmm. so many women that is not the answer for me it, yeah. it has worked. I've been on it almost like my entire adult life. So yeah. uh, my experience has been, you know, pretty good. But for so many of my friends, it just does not agree with their yeah. body. Yeah, I, they I can't don't, take it. They don't want to put, you know, that in their body, which is totally fair. And there's there's yeah. a lot of different options for birth control now with, you know, the thing that you put in your arm and the Nuva ring and all these different things. But I think for someone who is interested in finding the more holistic uh route i think definitely take notes on this whole episode i know i'm gonna listen back again and write down all all the names of everything you said because <laughs> i i mean it's just so great and i also think it's so yeah. important to note like we especially as entrepreneurs and people in business and people who are kind of making our own schedules we plan so much of our our days and our weeks ahead and we plan so much of our workout with time blocking and making to-do lists mm -hmm. that it's like why would we not tap into like you said this like kind of power this system that we have and we can work choose to work with it versus yeah. working against it and kind of plan accordingly I think it's yeah. genius I'm kind of pissed that I haven't started earlier honestly yeah <laughs> and you and you had mentioned that you had this client who you didn't realize had been already kind of implementing implementing this yeah. and I think that that's just really really interesting because I mean I'm sure that there's so many like powerful women out there who we don't even know that they're like 
literally tapping into this superpower we're like oh that's why you are where you're at she's like yeah because i have a holistic hormone health coach and she's been helping me track (laughs) my period and we're like damn it yeah we're like once we track our cycles it's over for you (laughs) it's over for you bitches we're unstoppable no i mean i just think that learning how to best optimize it like can really be like a game changer yeah Yeah. no I think it is something that is a game changer and I'm I'm curious to know for someone who wants to be more in tune like someone who's just not naturally maybe in tune with their body Mm -hmm. or wants to tap more into it what would your best advice be or some tips maybe yeah yeah so other than other than tracking I know tracking is definitely very important yeah yeah so um And I would definitely say if you're here listening to this, I mean, this is a great first step to kind of launch you forward and just understanding. And um, like you said, I I do think uh, it does start with just knowing where you're at. And um, there's a lot of great apps. Um, One that I like is called My Flow. And it's it's great because you can put in um, your last few periods. And so it'll kind of like go ahead and get an idea of like how your body works and be able to predict a little bit better. And I like that one because it just, um, it goes a little bit deeper than just predicting your next period, which is still good because then you can be more in touch with yourself, but it actually does have the four different phases and it'll give you a couple little recommendations too. So say you click on a day, a week in advance and it's your luteal phase. It'll give you like three little tips, like eat some root vegetables. Um, and that's because beta carotene is really great for this phase of the cycle, but it'll say, you know, plan a to-do list. And then it'll say, focus on strength training or whatever it is, just figuring out the way that your body, um, what it would need during that week. And, and, you know, during menstruation, it might recommend yoga because that's when you need to slow down a little bit more. It might recommend doing an audit of, you know, your business because that your brain just kind of works that way. And you can kind of be more in touch with your emotions and things like that. So I'm not sure how, yeah, I'm not sure how in depth it goes, but I know that it has like those three little tips um, for like any particular day. So yeah, that's a really good app that I would say for anyone that's new to this. Um, And especially because you might already have like started forgetting the names that I mentioned of like menstruation, follicular, ovulation, luteal, it has those on there too. So you, you click on a certain day and it'll be like luteal phase. Here's oh what yeah that's on. that's um, so great yeah and there's a a little section down there too for any notes that you might want to take on a particular day um i think that there's a couple of buttons for like symptoms that you can just pop in there so it's a it's really great kind of all-in-one um thing yeah. to start with and i don't know if they still have this feature but i thought it was super interesting that when i first got that app a couple of years ago they had a feature where you could actually sign your partner up for a mailing list that they would get mailed. Yeah. They would get mailed like, Hey, she's going to be in this phase next week, which means she needs more of this, this, and this, which is so cool. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, We were literally having a conversation before this of just like, kind of just ranting, you know, about our partners (laughs) and being like, this is what I need. And they are not doing it. So I don't, I don't want to have to tell you what I need. You should just know. And shit, I'm signing them up right now. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it's still there. If it's not still there, I'm going to, figure out how to have yeah. you know something created that does yeah. do that because it was no, there at one point um, that is absolutely it. genius i'm signing olivia up <laughs> and i'm signing my boyfriend <laughs> yeah yeah for sure totally genius um, but yeah and i would say to um doing as well for just kind of knowing where to start once you actually understand this stuff because the first part is just the education a lot of us aren't educated and sure, so when you have the now that the awareness is there of like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, this is something that's happening and I can actually pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. Then there's the, okay, what do I do? Like, what do I do to keep supporting myself? And um, so I know that the question earlier about, you know, what to do is specifically focused on nutrition. And so I want to give um, something that I call like five pillars of hormone health. Um, nutrition is a huge one. Um, so doing a little audit of your nutrition um, and that's kind of including the gut health as well. And then the next one would be uh, something that we talked about a little bit too, which is stress. It's one of the biggest hormone disruptors. So doing a little audit of not just um, something that I always ask my clients is not only on a scale of one to 10, where you would place your stress levels, because that gives you a good idea of how stressed they actually are on average. 
But on top of that, on a scale of one to 10, how often do you prioritize de-stressing? Because a lot of people don't think about that. They'll just be like, yeah, I'm like eight out of 10 stressed all the time. And it's like, okay, cool. What about prioritizing, taking time to combat that? Like not in the moment, but just like, I do this for five minutes every day. I do that for five minutes every day. And usually if it's like eight out of 10 on stress levels, it'll be like three out of 10 on prioritization because the more you actually start implementing things into your life to take time for you and take time to calm that nervous system down and not be so on edge, um, even if you know if it's a, in a work day, so to speak, like taking a little midday break and doing some breath work or something like that, just to reset yourself. Um, It's really, really important. So nutrition one, stress is the next one. Um, Movement is really important to look at too. Um, I say movement meaning exercise. So just looking at how you're moving your body, what your relationship to exercise looks like and thinking about what we talked about with those energy levels changing throughout your cycle. Are you actually honoring that and respecting that or are you trying to push through a workout because it was on your calendar even though you're on your period? Like let's really get real with how we can, you know, what we talked about earlier work with your body rather than against it that includes movement and exercise so slowing things down as you approach menstruation ramping it back up closer to ovulation and figuring out what feels good in between um so nutrition stress movement hydration is something that everyone needs more of um almost all of us could probably be drinking more water got your waters (laughs) nice i'm using mine to rest my phone so i can't show you (laughs) Um, but it is, it is here. Um, so yeah, just making sure that you're staying hydrated, whatever that looks like for you, however it would make sense to do, whether like you guys just having it with you at your desk, wherever you are. I always tell people if you're on the go all the time, um, keeping like a water bottle that you bring with you into your car and like every red light, you just do a quick little, a quick little chug and just Mm -hmm. making sure you get that in however you can. Um, and then the next thing that I would say, um, is looking at what was the how many have i done so far nutrition Four. stress oh sleep sleep is the biggest thing too um i know that we talked about that a little bit earlier <clears throat> but um i actually was just writing about this uh back in like the 60s they did a, a study and the average amount of sleep was eight to nine hours and they're looking at now people are getting like five to six (laughs) and it's just not okay we are not going to be able to function to our fullest capacity if we are not getting the proper amount of sleep and this is not just for hormones but anyone out there that is their own boss would understand like if you I know that you want to just like keep crushing it and keep grinding and stay up late and get the website done or whatever it is but you're not going to be able to show up fully the next day so having some really, really clear boundaries with yourself, especially when it comes to like technology and what you're, how you're using your phone in the evening and things like that. Like have a cutoff time for yourself, carve out like 30 minutes before you go to sleep to give yourself a foot massage, take a bath, like drink some hot tea, read a book, like whatever it is, just build out a really nice little evening routine for yourself. That's going to encourage not just proper amount of sleep, but actually getting into that deep sleep as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have a a post on my page that has like these five pillars, um, but I would maybe just write those things down. I'll just say one more time. It's going to be nutrition, stress, movement, hydration, and sleep, looking at all of those different areas and doing a quick little audit. And that could be your start. If there's an area that is just really lacking and you feel like, you know, most likely you'll be a little stronger in certain areas with that. And then a little weaker in some of those. And so just taking that first step of being like, okay, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start working on nutrition and sleep, or I'm going to start working on my stress and the way I exercise. Um, It's different for everyone, but making sure that you have that well-rounded approach is really, really important. Because we talk about holistic health. That means holistic, like the whole body. We're integrating so many different things to bring about balance. Um, And that's, it's not just a really, really um, incredible way to to heal this, but it's going to be long lasting as well. Because if you're optimizing all these different areas in a realistic way, in a very balanced way, and taking it step by step, because small steps still lead to big results, and not just big ones, but ones that last a long time. Because you're not doing something super crazy and restrictive, um, it's a really great place to start, and a really great place to set yourself up for this just becoming a new normal and not feeling like a chore to like add something else to your plate so good 
wow yeah so So, eye-opening honestly yeah and I resonated with so much of what you said especially the de-stressing we talk about Mm -hmm. self-care a lot but I really love the term de-stressing and kind of like approaching it like okay you're spending this part of your week really stressed out what part of your week are you spending de-stressing because especially in entrepreneurship I think burnout Mm -hmm. needs to be talked about more and like as a female entrepreneurship women in business podcast and like this brand that we're kind of pushing now I would never want to encourage people to push themselves to work themselves to burnout you know Mm -hmm. like I definitely experienced that myself with stress and it's so important to prioritize that t- that time for de-stressing and then you can like yeah. tell your business partner or your coworkers, hey i'm i'm de-stressing and like yeah. they have to honor that because you are just gonna one you're gonna be more productive like you're gonna work better not that you mm-hmm. should look at it in those terms but two we're humans yeah. we're not robots like yeah. the 40 hour work week was made a long time ago and it's not you know it's not the most beneficial yeah. thing right now and to be working these long hours and just going 24 7 hard all the time it's not healthy it's not balanced and so I'm really glad you said that Mm -hmm. of course yeah and also thinking about the 40-hour work week and like the nine to five was more than likely set up in like a male structured worldview so honoring that women just don't work that way um and what you said too about burnout you know knowing that you can get more workout during certain times than others and really honoring what that's going to look like. Like if you need to take extra time to prioritize self-care during a certain week, because you know, those energy levels are just, it's going to be pushing it. Mm -hmm. um, Just do that, like take action and and have that like kind of level of self-discipline almost to actually, you do, if you have to schedule in self-care in the same way you would a business meeting, like you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I actually even like referring to like my de-stressing time as like decompressing time because it kind yeah. of, it gives me that like visual and like almost like like physical, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, it makes me feel like I'm becoming lighter. Yeah. Like it feels yeah. like, you know, I've been holding this on my shoulders and this is the time where I'm like releasing it. Yeah, you're just dropping off some yeah. Just dropping, some, dro- <laughs> dropping off some baggage and, yeah. you know, it's really good that time is just invaluable Mm -hmm. yeah for sure all right well i feel like we totally (laughs) jam-packed this episode thank you so much for your expertise like wow you are so knowledgeable and i really feel like we could sit here so so well spoken i almost feel like we we need to have like a part two because it's like there's everything there's There's so much to unpack within everything and like you said it's a holistic approach and I I also Mm -hmm. love that you said that because it's so true it's not like here's the simple answer it's like well you have to take a lot of things into consideration here yeah Yeah. in like you said there's also no one size yes. fits all correct you know yes. we're all different yeah. all of our bodies are different all of our minds are different and yeah you know it's about we, honoring that as well yeah we need to treat yeah. treat it as such okay so we're gonna get into our questions to wrap up the episode these are two questions we'd like to ask every guest the first being what would be your biz pro tip and that could be literally anything yeah so um kind of staying on brand with our conversation <laughs> I would definitely say um, start trying to work with your body um, instead Mm -hmm. of working against it. Um, So you can, you can have all these proven systems and strategies that are going to, you know, get you the success you want. um, But in an even deeper level, if you're actually working with what you already have, I think that's amazing. And also side note too, along with this tip, I think that um, earlier I mentioned that it was actually a, a business mentor that had already been using her cycle that I didn't even know. This is a mentor that's like, multiple seven figure business so if that tells you anything it works guys yeah. i'm it telling works. you me and jess are about to be on some next level shit oh yeah, yeah. it's I'm like, over i'm like the app was my flow i'm yeah. scheduling a call with you next oh, week yeah, like we're, we're, yes. we're on it <laughs> we're on it um and our sure. second question is what is the best piece of advice that you've ever received yeah, I would say that that's, that's also going to be um, from a business mentor in the past. Um, it's actually like, is this an acronym? Like when you have letters. Yes, that, that yes, mean, yes, yeah, yes. so it's HILA, H-I-L-E-A, and that stands for High Intention, Low Attachment. And that is something that has changed my life. It's kind of that whole concept of showing yourself grace where whether it's in your personal life or it's in business, Um, You can have really, really high intentions for something, um, but just also keeping that balance of of low attachment so that when that thing does happen or doesn't happen, everything's still good. 
it's all working out as it should be. Um, so H-I-L-A, high intention, low attachment is something that I carry around with me quite a lot. That's, That's great. Beautiful. I've never heard that. Yeah. And that is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really love that. Thank really you. That, Thank yeah. you so much for your expertise. Yeah. Well, you are so That's knowledgeable, wonderful. so well-spoken, so humble. It's an honor to have you on. And where can people um, follow your journey and get your little course? Plug yourself. Yeah, out. for sure. So um, I'm the most active on Instagram for sure. And that's just at Grace Rash, R-A-S-H is my last name. Um, so you can find me over there. Um, I would say that's the best place to start uh, to get to my website. I also have a Facebook group that would be really awesome to join. I um, actually just launched that a couple of weeks ago. So we're going live every Friday doing a Q&A. Um, it's a place for women to not only learn more about their hormones and their cycle and how to optimize all of that, but also to connect with each other because I think that it's something that we really need to be doing in community with other women. Um, so being able to come into that space and not just hear from me, but also ask questions of your own and connect with other women. Um, and you can find that. I think it's it's linked in my bio on, on Instagram um, and on Instagram as well. Tons of, of other trainings and posts and things like that related to what we've been talking about today. Um, and if you do want more information about working together, or even if you're still not quite sure what kind of help you might need, but just want to talk to someone about this stuff, about what you've been dealing with, you can always book a discovery call with me. I do those all the time, um, regardless of what the route of healing looks like for you, just being able to talk it out with someone, just what you're struggling with, what your goals are, what could be standing in your way is really awesome. So you can just click the book now button on my page at Grace Rush, and we can talk a little bit more. Nice. And we will make sure to include your Facebook group in our description. So we'll make it easier for our audience to go ahead and check that out. Yeah. And that was awesome. Thank you so much. Such a great episode. Very enlightening. I know me and Jess are going to have our own meeting after this episode. Yeah. (laughs) Go in real quick on how we can just better utilize ourselves and our time and our flows. So awesome. thank you so much. Guys, if you've, if you've enjoyed this episode, please take a screenshot. Show us you're listening. Show us you loved it. And we will see you next week for another episode. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.